Carolina Panthers owner David Tepper said he was willing to pay whatever it took to bring a world-class staff here to Carolina, and the Panthers made their first big splash hire on Sunday afternoon. We'll break it all down right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Make sure to watch our show and subscribe to our show over on our Locked On Panthers YouTube channel. You can also check out the podcast wherever you're currently listening to the podcast and wherever you listen to all of your favorite podcasts. Just be sure to rate review, and subscribe so you never miss a single edition of Locked on Panthers. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter, at Julian Council, where on Fridays I answer your weekly Friday mailbag questions here on the show. And if you'd like to participate, either at me or DM me over on Twitter, at Julian Council. Today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by Nissan. The only thing more exciting than the big game is the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. There's only five days left until the Super Bowl. Are you ready? The Nissan Aria, the EV for people who love the drive. Learn more at NissanUSA.com. When Frank Reich was introduced as the new head coach here in Carolina, Panthers general manager Scott Fitter and Panthers owner David Tepper said one of the things that helped Frank Reich stand apart was the staff that he was going to bring to Carolina. He was going to bring a world-class staff here for the Panthers, and David Tepper let it be known to Frank Reich when he hired him that he was willing to spare no expense to make sure that happened and the Panthers would be set up for success in 2023 and beyond. And David Tepper, for the first time, Seemingly in a long time here in Carolina was a man of his word as the Carolina Panthers made the first big splash hire of the 2023 NFL coaching carousel here in Carolina by coming to terms with former Denver Broncos defensive coordinator Ajero Avero, one of the young up and coming names in the coaching game here in the NFL. The Panthers go out there and get him, and I bet they drop the bag because this guy is a star according to everyone I've heard from and talked to about him everything I've read about Ajero Avero and I'm very happy pat on the back um to me for finally getting his name right I've been saying over the last couple of weeks when he was a uh, coaching candidate here for the head coaching job in Carolina and elsewhere including in Denver I was saying Ejero Evero so it's been very hard for me all day to try and practice Ajero Avero, Ajero Avero. So I don't butcher his name anymore. I was watching NFL Live earlier, and you got everybody up there actually butchering his name too. So I feel a little bit better. But either way, he's here in Carolina, and this is a fantastic hire for the Carolina Panthers. I don't know if it's going to work, but on paper, this is a fantastic hire. And speaking of on paper, and his first year, his only year as a defensive coordinator this past season, in Denver, Averro's defense finished 10th in defensive DVOA, 7th in defensive EPA, that's expected points added, 7th in yards per game allowed, 7th in opponent's points per drive, 2nd in third down success rate, 7th in opponent red zone touchdown rate, which is a big one, 4th in defensive 3 and out percentage, and tied 14th in takeaways with 23 this past season. So you see that. The man coached up a top 10 defense, and Denver certainly has the personnel to do it, although they did move on from Bradley Chubb and shaded him midseason to the Miami Dolphins. For Rivero, though, in his first year as a D.C., to be able to get that kind of production out of that Broncos defense, that tells you everything you need to know about what kind of coach he is. And his background is impressive. Vic Fangio was one of the candidates here in Carolina to be the next defensive coordinator. He ended up going to Miami. The reports came out that he was going to go there. Then it was kind of like, oh, maybe let me wait and see what the market looks like with San Francisco, where he had been in the past. And when he was in San Francisco, who was working underneath him? Jairo Rivera, who spent a couple of years under Fangio. So he comes from that Fangio defensive coaching tree. He also spent five years as a secondary coach in Los Angeles with the Rams under Sean McVay, who could have tried to bring him back to Los Angeles as his defensive coordinator, but instead, Averro is here now in Carolina, and that is, by all accounts, a fantastic hire for the Carolina Panthers. Now, I was surprised, though, to be honest, that he took the job. I tweeted out 
on a su- Saturday evening when I saw that the Carolina Panthers had requested to interview him for the defensive co- coordinator job that I would be surprised if he would take the job, not knowing anything about him, per- um, like as far as personally or really having talked to anybody at the point in time. I just looked at it as very similar to the situation for Steve Wilkes. Now, Avero, of course, was not the interim coach here for 12 games, and he was not here in his locker room, but he interviewed for the head coaching job here in Carolina. And for Wilkes, like we talked about when Frank Reich was named the head coach, it would be hard to envision Wilkes, especially with his circumstances, that he would agree to then be the defensive coordinator, and even vice versa, had Frank Reich not gotten the job here, although I mentioned this and other people mentioned it as well, since they would love to see with Wilkes as the head coach and then Reich as the OC, it's hard to see that happening, especially when Reich interviewed for the head coaching job and had been a head coach before. And those two guys both had been head coaches. Now, Averro's never been a head coach. So maybe it made it a little bit more palatable for him to take this job. And I'm sure I'm sure the money had a lot to do with it. Now, I did have someone, one of my friends who uh, covers uh, the NFL, they did reach out to me um, on Saturday evening after I did tweet that out saying like, I'd be surprised to get the job. And they were telling me that they kind of felt the same way that uh, they felt like he was actually using Carolina, more so his agent was using Carolina as a bargaining tool because David Tepper so blatantly does not want to get outbid. We saw that with Matt Rule when he decided, oh man, Matt Rule, there's interest in the Giants with Rule. Let me go ahead and focus all my attention on him and then reset the coaching uh, uh, salary market there with that seven-year deal, which of course we found out turned out to be a bad deal for Tepper but really not that big of a deal for all of us at this point in time because it's not our money. And, you know, it didn't work out as far as the head coaching job and Matt Rule's out in Nebraska. And the Panthers are certainly heading in the right direction out with Frank Reich and Averro on this coaching staff. But the thought was, from at least the person I talked to, that it looked like Averro's agent, who is the same agent for Ben Johnson, who once upon a time was considered the favorite for this job. Well, apparently Ben Johnson and his agent – leverage the Panthers offer to get a crazy salary to stay in Detroit where he wanted to be in the first place. And it felt like, according to my friend here, that Averro and his agent, which is the same agent for Ben Johnson, might have been doing the same thing, especially because the Carolina Panthers overlooked him. But that's not the case, as he's now here in Carolina and money talks. So well done there by Frank Reich, David Tepper, and the Panthers organization to get a Averro, 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 Averro. Going to be very hard to get that nailed in to my mind to come here in Carolina. And when you look at it too, like the other options he had for a long time, while he was sitting there in Denver interviewing for the job and waiting, it seemed like Kevin O'Connell, the head coach up there with the Minnesota Vikings, really wanted Averro to be his defensive coordinator. They spent time in LA under Sean McVay. Now Sean McVay also has a potential opening with the Rams if Raheem Morris would get another job. So Averro would have been a potential candidate there if things played out that way. But instead, he's now here in Carolina. And in a way, it's surprising because of the relationship that he has with O'Connell, but maybe he looks at the Panthers personnel with J.C. Horn and Derek Brown and with Dante Jackson and Brian Burns and Jeremy Chin and thinks that this might be a better situation for me with this young defense. That's very similar in talent to the one that he just left in Denver, and he wanted another opportunity. He could have stayed there under Sean Payton, but he wanted it out of his contract. They didn't give him the job, so it makes sense uh, that he wouldn't want to stay there. He wanted to go find other opportunities, and he's found that opportunity here in Carolina. Now, the scheme looks like it's going to be a 3-4 base. The Panthers played multiple schemes under Phil Snow, a little bit three-man fronts, sometimes four-man fronts, and then once Al Holcomb took over as the interim, they were primarily a 4-3 defense. I'm sure... Averro, like every smart coach, is going to have his scheme fit the players on the roster. One of the key questions is going to be, where does Jeremy Chin line up? Does he play safety or does he play closer to the line of scrimmage in the box? Is more of a linebacker kind of hybrid that he played a couple years ago in his rookie season where he was really successful. We'll see what happens there. I'm going to have to reach out to one of these uh, film nerds to get them on the show to kind of break down the scheme because I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know all the intricacies of Averro's scheme and a 3-4 and what he wants to do here in Carolina. So I'll have to find somebody later on, maybe this week, going to be kind of hard. Everyone's out there in the desert for the Super Bowl. But at some point in time here, in the next week or so, I'm going to get somebody on to really break down the scheme and what Ejero, Ejero Averro, again, Ejero Averro, brings here to Carolina. Now, I will say this one thing, though. We've spent a lot of time when we're talking about Wilkes potentially getting the job, talk about the importance of the offensive coordinator job and how 
that person potentially, if the Panthers have success, could leave after a season or two. And then the Panthers in a situation where you're having to elevate the ne- the quarterback coach or maybe the, the, somebody else on that staff and hope that they can be a good enough play caller and someone who can help develop the young, likely rookie quarterback the Carolina Panthers are going to draft. That's very similar to what the situation now is going to be here in Carolina with Avero, who is likely going to be right back here a season from now or a year from now talking to NFL teams about a head coaching position. So if that's the case, Whoever he hires underneath him needs to be groomed to potentially be the successor in 2024. Because I would just tell you right now, looking at what this staff might end up being, because Chris Tabor, fantastic special teams coordinator. James Campen, same case as far as offensive line coach, one of the best in the NFL. Now you have one of these young, hotshot defensive coordinators who's a great leader. And Averro, he's probably not going to be around very long. You need to make sure whoever you hire underneath him can be the guy who can elevate this defense moving forward. I look at this defense as having the potential to be a top 10, top five unit this upcoming season. Now they got to find another corner. Probably need to figure out the defensive line. The person they have now fits the scheme that he wants to run. We'll see what they do with Shaq Thompson, that linebacker, and maybe they get a safety and bring Chin up into the box. We'll see how it works out. But in all likelihood, I would not be surprised if this is basically a one-year rental. An expensive and a great hire, mind you, as far as a rental goes with a Vero. But don't expect him to be sticking around very long. So the same way we sat there and we're kind of hang, hand-wringing about, oh, man, well, you hire Wilkes, and then you're going to lose your OC at some point in time. It could be the exact same case here with Ajero Averro. So don't expect him to be around long, and that also would be a positive thing it means that the coaches that you're hiring are wanted by the teams in the league and they are set and ready to go be leaders of their own organization. So we'll see how that works out. But either way, kudos to Frank Reich and maybe even more kudos to David Tepper, who interviewed him, Averro, for the head coaching job and then circled back and was able to convince him with his checkbook that Carolina was the place that needed to be and that he did not need to worry about the Rams opening potentially and going up to the Vikings and hanging out with his friend Kevin O'Connell. But that Carolina, with this young defense, he was the guy who needed to be the head of it. And so here we are, the Jero Vero, the new D.C. here in Carolina. As the Panthers make a fantastic hire by all accounts. Now, speaking of David Tepper, so far, what he's been doing, this coaching carousel, you got to give the guy some credit. And I'll give him his flowers here in just a moment. On Locked on Panthers. Now, today's episode of Locked on Panthers is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. I've been telling y'all for months now how Prize Picks work, and it's kind of changed up. You used to be only able to pick two to five players. Now you can pick two to six players, and if they score more or less in their Prize Picks rejection, you can win up to 25 times your money. Not 10 times, 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you can watch. This includes the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NHL, PGA Tour, men's and women's college basketball, soccer, esports, NASCAR, cricket, and so much more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and up in Canada. So be sure to download the Price Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. So this is how it works. If you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100 when you download the Price Picks app or go over to prizepicks.com today. Y'all know I'm hard on David Tepper. Y'all know it. Rock Hill, <laughs> the amount of Tepper sports entertainment execs that have left, and, well, primarily uh, Matt Rule not working out here in Carolina as the first head coach hired by David Tepper. I appreciate it when he first got here to Charlotte, his willingness to be a part of the community. And he's done that by going out there and hanging out the roaring riot and understand and trying to understand the fan culture here in Carolina, the amount of money that him and his wife, Nicole, have given to the local communities here in the Charlotte area and even South Carolina and throughout the Carolinas and trying to help better those communities. So I do appreciate how David Tepper, at points of times, has gone about his ownership here in Carolina. And I have to also understand and give him a level of grace that he's new to this. And he has said on multiple occasions, going back to even right before the draft a year ago, that, hey, I don't know everything. I'm still learning. And he said it even a couple of days ago 
when he introduced Frank Reich here in Carolina that I'm still learning on the job. I am humble enough to know that I do not know everything about running an NFL team. The first three years, really, I'm going to count. I'm not going to count the Ron of Air years, the last two in 18 and 19, but the last three, 2020, 2021, 2022, have not gone according to plan for David Tepper or for anyone who cheers for the black and blue here in Carolina. And it's frustrated a lot of us. And I'm sure David Tepper, who spent $2.25 billion liquid straight cash for the Carolina Panthers has to be among the most frustrated, if not the most frustrated because of all the money he spent and how he has made the Carolina Panthers, his passion project, his baby, and he wants to win this so badly. Now I always look at him as more of being a steward as a team is here in Charlotte long before he was here and long after he'll be gone, assuming the NFL doesn't go anywhere here in the United States of America. And he does kind of owe some sense of debt to the fans to make sure that he wins games and does not completely wreck the franchise, which he kind of has done over the last couple of seasons. But the last couple of weeks, and I hadn't mentioned this, you know, at exit interviews right after the season finale in New Orleans, the Panthers won that game saying that David Tepper had to have a fantastic offseason. He had to get everything right this offseason because really his reputation and the Panthers organization's trajectory is going to hinge upon how he went about the coaching hire here in Carolina with Frank Reich ended up being the choice. And I think he made an excellent choice on paper. Reich, 40, 33, and one. Talked to Stephen Holder yesterday on the show about his tenure up in Indianapolis and Holder, who spent every year there covering Reich when Reich was in Indianapolis, still believes he's a good head coach. And I think that Frank Reich is a good head coach. He's proven it. He's been a Super Bowl winner as an OC. He's played in this league, maybe not primarily as a franchise quarterback, but he's played in this league at that position, has been able to coach that position. And Holder thinks that Andrew Luck's best season, most efficient season, came under Frank Reich. And that Kirsten Wentz was doing some good things under Reich. And even Phillip Rivers in the final years of his career. And Jacoby Brissett, that Reich actually can be a quarterback whisperer and can help whoever comes here to Carolina, whether it's that rookie quarterback, which I expect it to be, or if it's a veteran, or if it's, I guess, Sam Darnold or somebody like that. He believes that Frank Reich can coach that guy up. So that was the most important thing that David Tepper needed to do was get the head coaching hire right. And I think he did. It's unfortunate that Steve Wilkes did not get this job, and Tepper basically told us from the get-go that Wilkes was never going to truly be a candidate, and he and Scott Fitter can say that Steve Wilkes absolutely had a chance. But when David Tepper says that he wanted an offensive coach because of the NFL always changing the rules towards the offense, it's hard to really believe that he ever had a chance if that's the basis of why you wanted to go offense and the primarily all the guys you interviewed outside of Averro and Wilkes we're offensive coaches. So, unfortunate that's how it broke down for Wilkes. Might get the San Francisco job. I know he spent all day Monday interviewing with the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan. That would be great for him and a great situation for that organization. It might even be the best for the Panthers and for Wilkes. But I like Frank Reich at higher. And I appreciate that Tepper has been a man of his word saying that, hey, I'm going to spend whatever we need to spend to try and get the best coaches here. It's hard with the salary cap league to really find um, those advantages, like, yeah, I know he wanted to do it with the, the HQ and the sports training facility out there in Rock Hill. And he could have done it if he would have spent his own money. But of course that uh, broke down and we'll see what happens, what the future is with potential HQ and training facility for the organization. Um, but the best way you can really find a uh, competitive advantage outside of his ownership being competent, which they're starting to look a little bit more competent aside from the Colts after not doing the, uh, the diversity training. Now, she did get it done as I was reading Joe Person from the Athletics article breaking down uh, what happened with the Carolina Panthers uh, coaching search. Uh, but one of the things that you can do to set yourself apart is to hire the right coaches. And by being able to spend the most money to hire those coaches, that can help you get guys like Averro here. That can get Frank Reich, who has had success in this league here, and that can get guys like Chris Tabor to stay and James Campen to stay and We'll see who else joins his coaching staff. We have to be excited so far about what David Tepper has been able to do here over the last couple of weeks and having a more thorough search. And he learned from his mistake of only talking to, I believe, Eric Bieniemy, Mike McCarthy, um, Matt Rule, and Kevin Stefanski. And then canceling with Josh McDaniels, which I've already told you how I feel about him. Not a bad decision at all. But to only have second interviews of Rule, of McCarthy, that didn't seem wise and it really limits it only four people that you talk to and not to have cast a wider net, which is what I wanted him to do. 
than what the Carolina Panthers did by talking to nine different candidates and then having three of them and Kellen Moore and Wilkes and Reich be your finalists. I love the process that he went about going after and talking to these coaches this year. And I appreciate now allowing Frank Reich the autonomy to go out there and to get the staff that he wants and to be willing to pay those men, whatever it takes, and maybe even women here, whatever it takes for them to come to Carolina to help elevate this franchise, even if it's just for a year. It's going to show people who are coaches that the Panthers are serious about wanting you to come to an organization and compensating you for your talents. And Averro wouldn't be surprised if he's gone next season, but maybe they can go out there and hire the next great young defensive coordinator or maybe a veteran defensive coordinator who is looking for another spot and can come here and work for this Carolina Panthers defense moving forward. That should not be a concern. And in a way, Tepper kind of showed that when they hired Joe Brady. Now, Joe Brady didn't have the requisite NFL experience like Averro has. And I was skeptical of whether he really truly was ready for the OC position here in Carolina. And I think that Joe eventually will be a good coach here in the NFL. And we'll see how much success he has down the line. But David Tepper showed right there, like Joe Brady was the hot candidate in college football and in the NFL as a play caller, even though he had never called plays, and he went out there and got him. And I know Matt Rule hired him, but he went out there and paid Joe Brady to come here to Carolina. So I give David Tepper all the credit in the world for the way he's gone about the search so far and the way that he has been willing to pay these coaches and that it's starting to look like the Carolina Panthers are finally becoming a serious organization. It stinks that it took five years of ownership to get here. But, you know, it's not like we all immediately start doing something or are great at it. It takes time. Got to be patient. I've certainly been frustrated. I've certainly held my criticism. I still have criticism of David Tepper. We got to credit when credit's due. So my mom always told me, I'm going to give David Tepper credit right now because he is helping Frank Reich establish a pretty damn good coaching staff here in Carolina. And I cannot wait to see who else joins here and what this team can do in 2023 and beyond. And speaking of that coaching search, let's uh, do a quick update on who could also be joining Frank Reich and underneath Ajero Evero on his defensive staff. We'll do that here in just a moment on Locked on Panthers. This episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by our friends over at Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the month of January. I know everyone's trying to stick to the resolution of eating healthier. And I know it's hard because sometimes you don't want to compromise the taste. But, man, I've got the thing just for you. You got to try Built. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious you won't think they're good for you. Perfect for your New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good, you ask? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. I'm not sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around for a box anymore. For years, we've been talking about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. You can still do that, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to the Sam's Club, and of course, remember, run in and grab a 13-bar box with their hit new flavors, brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. We've been trying to figure out over the last couple of days who potentially could join Frank Reich and his staff here in Carolina, now we have a defensive coordinator in Ajero Averro coming over from Denver, where he spent one season as their DC after spending time in San Francisco and LA and led them into the top 10 in pretty much every major defensive category as I went over earlier on the show. A uh, fantastic hire for Frank Reich and the Carolina Panthers. Now, who could potentially come here to Carolina because Averro is now here? As the D.C., according to Mike Kliss, who is one of the reporters out there in Denver, uh, the Broncos inside the linebacker coach, Peter Hansen, has parted ways with the organization now that Sean Payton has been introduced and he is the head coach out there. Hansen uh, could be, according to Kliss, a candidate to follow a Jero Averro here to Carolina. And I imagine he would be the inside linebackers coach as, again, going to that 3-4 scheme as a base. Going to need an inside linebacker coach. Going to need an outside linebacker coach. Looks like Peter Hansen could be the favorite for that job if Averro is willing to bring him into Carolina. And let's go back to what Frank Reich did say when he was introduced um, about, what, 10 days ago or so. 
that he said that he wanted to get the coordinator hires first. So he's got special teams hire as it was already on the roster or on the um, in the building and under contract. And Chris Taylor, he's now got his DC hire. He'll get his OC hire here shortly. We'll see uh, when that might be. But he wanted to get those coordinators in to allow them to then build their staffs. And, of course, David Tepper is going to have a say in that in a way, as far as, you know, the checkbook. But Frank Reich will have a say in maintaining that there's going to be chemistry among his staff. And he said that was a big thing in Indianapolis, having that chemistry. And when talking to uh, Stephen Holder on yesterday's show, he did speak how maybe Frank Reich made a mistake letting so many of his staffers follow Nick Sirianni to Indianapolis and allowing some of the guys to go get other opportunities, which speaks highly of right to do that. Cause I've seen other instances so far, like Averro sitting there in Denver waiting for a while to get out of his contract. Uh, I want to say uh, Vance Joseph has the same situation out there in Arizona where he's not getting the head coaching job, but they don't want to let him out of his contract and they want to keep him as their DC allowing your coaches to have opportunities to advance to higher positions that reflects positively upon you. And Frank Reich, who we found out who the kind of man he is yesterday when speaking to Stephen Holder, he allowed that to happen, although it might have been to his detriment. It's a good thing. It's a positive thing. And more importantly, he's going to have to be able to groom his successors, and they're going to probably need to do that with Averro likely only here in Carolina from a year, maybe two, now him being a defensive coach. Might keep him around for a little bit longer as there does not seem to be much of an appetite to hire those kind of guys. You look who's been hired so far. Sean Payton, offensive coach out there in Denver. Of course, Frank Reich, offensive coach here in Carolina. D'Amico Ryan's defensive coach going down to Houston, but a former player with the Houston Texans and knows the McNair ownership group from his time playing there, which likely allowed him a better opportunity there than he would have gotten, of course, here in Carolina where they weren't able to get him on the schedule. And of course, with the, the unfortunate passing of Anton walks with Charlotte FC, that also complicated things. You're not seeing around the NFL right now. You're not seeing a lot of these defensive guys get a chance. Maybe Lou Amaruno, who's the DC up there with Phil at the Cincinnati Bengals. Maybe he gets a job out in Arizona. We'll see. Um, but it's a good thing that Frank Reich has been willing to allow his assistants to go elsewhere, but it's going to be important that he's able to groom some of these other guys, especially if Averro leaves after a season, but he wanted to bring in the coordinators first. They didn't allow those guys to go out there and trying to find their coaches. So maybe Peter Hansen is someone who will join the staff. Uh, a bit of news, maybe we're not, we'll see if it happens or not, but Parks Frazier, who became the play caller after Frank Reich was fired up there in Indianapolis, and Jeff Saturday became the interim head coach. Stephen Holder told us yesterday he believes that he's going to join Frank Reich here as Frank Reich officiated his wedding, and his wife, formerly uh, Caroline Can, was here in Carolina as the team reporter. Uh, of course, Kristen Balboni took over her job, but um, Carol, I guess, well, is Kristen's last name still Balboni? Either way, um, Caroline Can could be coming back home to Carolina as Caroline Frazier, if Parks Frazier does uh, join the Panthers staff. And then, uh, let's see, Dom Capers also could potentially end up being a consultant for the Panthers organization. Now, I'm looking at some news here. Brian Flores is headed up to Minnesota as their DC. Is that what I'm seeing here uh, as I'm looking here? Because I, I don't have my watch on. Usually, yeah. So, Brian Flores up to the Vikings. Good hire for Kevin O'Connell there. Uh, as far as OC, it really feels like we got to wait until the Super Bowl to find out what happens. And it's not just the Super Bowl. It's also wondering what Indianapolis is going to do as they are in their fourth week of their coaching search. Now, Arizona, kind of the same case, but they didn't really start their coaching search in earnest until they were able to uh, hire a GM and Monty Ford, who came over from the Tennessee Titans. But Indianapolis is having a third round of interviews. Has Shane Steichen, the Eagles OC, and at one time, consider the favorite here in Carolina, Shane Steichen, is still a candidate there in Indianapolis. Now, if he leaves Philadelphia, then what happens under Nick Sirianni and who becomes the OC? Is it Kevin Petula, who spent a couple of years as a wide receiver coach for Frank Reich in Indianapolis, who could be a candidate for the OC job here? Does Brian Johnson, the quarterback coach there in Philly, get the job? Johnson was considered the potential OC here in Carolina, had Steve Willis gotten the job. So we're kind of waiting on not just the Super Bowl, but also Indianapolis to make a decision as Nick Sirianni will potentially have to find a new OC. Could that be Petulo? Could that be Johnson? Or will one of the two end up here in Carolina if Steichen decides to stay or even if he decides to leave? So there's kind of an update on what the coaching staff uh, could end up looking like here in Carolina as the Panthers finally have a defensive coordinator in Ajero Avero. Again, pat on the back to your boy after butchering his name, Edro Evero, as I was saying, but Ajero Avero, and I think I kind of got it locked 
into the brain now. So good hire, exciting hire. No idea if it's going to work. <laughs> I hope it will. It feels like it's going to, especially looking at the talent on this roster. Got to figure out where some guys might play. Again, want to talk to uh, one of these uh, scheme nerds, get them on the on the show, and uh, break it down for me and for you and everyone out there uh, who wants to know about what that scheme and what the team could look like, where Jeremy Chin might line up, and if they need to add uh, some other linemen, if they're really set to play that position or play that formation with the guys that they have on the roster currently. But that's going to wrap up this edition of the Lockdown Patriots podcast, a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, hosted by yours truly, Julian Council. Again, y'all, make sure to watch the show and subscribe to the show over on our Lockdown Panthers YouTube channel. Check us out wherever you listen to this podcast and all of your favorite podcasts, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. And make sure to follow me on Twitter at Julian Council, where I will be back on Friday answering your weekly Friday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me over on Twitter at Julian Council if you want to participate on Friday. In the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole as always. Keep pounding, and I'll talk to you all on Wednesday.